Good morning, everybody. It is Tammy Nelson with Stampin' Scrap with Tammy. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I am here today to share with you a beautiful, well, no, beautiful is not the right word, a super adorable, cute class that I have coming up. It is one of our classes from our weekend retreat that we just um, wrapped up, which is why I'm a day late. We, I was busy wrapping that stuff up yesterday, so I decided to finish all of that, and I can focus on this now today. So. One of the classes was just too cute not to share again. So that's what I'm here to do today. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time up here um, chatting because we can do that as we are stamping. So I'm gonna share with you one of the cards as well as give you a look at all of the cards that are included in the class that I am going to, or actually it's open right now. I just set it up um, right before the video. So there is a link um, to join the class if you would like to. It is an online class only. So basically it's a to-go class. So there is not a live portion in my stamp studio, um, but you can pick it up here. You can have it shipped to you. It's going to be a great addition to all the other things that we have going on. All right, everybody. So welcome. Let's get down to it. And so you will see as soon as I point the camera down, just how cute this class is. Okay, let's go for it here. So thank you all for bearing with me as I am a day late this week. You know, sometimes that happens. It's been a busy week or so. Well, it's been a busy month in the stamp studio with all the events we had going on, but we are kind of wrapped up and kind of getting back down to normal. As you see, I got some fun stuff sitting here. And so those people that took the retreat last weekend, now I did ship out kits, so they probably are getting them today and tomorrow. Excuse my mess here. Um, so they will already have this class, but I decided I just loved it so much that I'm going to offer it as just an individual class because the retreats include three classes, but this one was by far my favorite. And so it is using the Sweet Stockings Bundle. And isn't this so cute? So in the class, it's going to be four card designs, two of each, a full package of the designer series paper, and a package of these matte decorative dots. There's optional add-on of the stamp set and dies, as well as the embossing powder. I'm going to use the white embossing powder on two of the projects. So that's an optional add-on. Um, if you haven't gotten into embossing yet, uh, this is a great opportunity to start. Um, I've been sharing it, gosh, almost every week lately. It's been kind of my thing lately. All right, so let me share with you this paper. Now, of course, who does not love a good puppy or kitten card? But the flip sides of these are also just fabulous. So you don't necessarily, if you know, for some reason, you're not really a dog lover or kitty lover, you can use the flip sides of these papers. They are so pretty. So I'm gonna show you these. It's like a secret little gem. The die cuts, do cut these out. Now, of course, you can just fussy cut them as well. I did a little bit of both when I was working with um, this bundle. And look at these. And this just happy little dog. I mean, how could you not just be in a good mood after seeing that puppy? And these flip sides are gorgeous. There we are. So that's the designer series paper. In my class, it does include a full package. So two of each one of these. Okay, what are we going to make today? So we're going to make one of those cards today. This is a simple, successful um, stamping card. Of course, I like to bring those to you. So then I do need to share with you... Um, another card that I use with the same exact layout. And, you know, I've got these other beautiful cards. I'm going to have to do a share and show one of these days because I've got all these other retreat cards that I think you guys uh, all need to see. Okay, so this is the same exact um, card measurements. for. So that's what I always consider a simple, successful stamping card. It's one that you can make with very easily just switching out the designer series paper in the bundle that you use. So these background designer series are the same as the one I'm gonna share with you today. And I will tell you those measurements as we go. All right, so let's get down to work here. Let's see, okay, we've got Cherry Cobbler for our card base. And let's see, here's my designer. Here, I'll set these out right now. And then you could write them down if you want. So if you want the measurements, go for it, write it down. Okay, what else do we need? I got all kinds of stuff in here. And I've got all my pieces out now. We'll set the envelopes aside. We won't need those till it's time to send, but I do need to grab some ribbon. So I'm going to add the Whisper White ribbon. This is a really a nice fluffy ribbon, so I liked this one for this card. Okay, so this is so simple. It's, since it's so simple, I'm gonna do both of them. So what I've got here, let's 
go again here. Cherry Cobbler, I have this score, or not scored, I have this um, cut the long way. So I cut my basic piece of paper at four and one fourth, and that's what's giving me my card base. And I'm going to need to get a bone fold, so I'll be right back with you after I grab that. I should show you what I did the other day. So after my team meeting the other day, I needed to de-stress a little bit. So look at this. This was a card from a few weeks ago. I made 25 of these. I don't know what for, but I have 25 beautiful happy birthday cards. Aren't those cute? Um, I needed to just wind down a little bit. So I started them at the retreat, but I didn't have my blending brush with. So then I finished them off um, last night and the night before. All right, and so Cherry Cobbler, I have two card bases. Cherry Cobbler, um, cut at four and one fourth by 11. And then you just score it. You can, if you like to score it, score it at five and a half. And then my next layer, I have ran this through an embossing folder and I did it with my tasteful touches embossing folder. Just anything with just a slight bit of texture is what you'd wanna use there. My goodness, I did not prepare. Yes, I did. I was gonna say, I didn't prepare at all. I don't even have adhesive here. But when you're right next to your drawer that holds your adhesive, that's no trouble. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these down. I am using my stamp and seal because that's what I grabbed. Um, there's other options. I also like liquid glue. Okay, so that is going to be the base of our cart. Now I picked two different designer series papers than what I have here. Or actually, well, it's gonna be the same one because I cut it from the same sheet of paper. But I wanted to share with you this card since I already have that one made, then I'm gonna share different patterns because then you'll be able to see how it looks great with other patterns. All right, so let's go with the bottom layer first. So my back layer, I have three and one fourth by four and three fourths. The next layer, I do have it just slightly smaller on the top so that this part in the back will sneak, sneak in there a little peak a little bit larger. So that is three by four and three fourths. Now, if you cut them the same, that would be okay too. It wouldn't be the end of the world. Okay, so let's do our back layer, three and one fourth by four and three fourths. Now, if you do decide to get the class option, all of these measurements are there for you. It is a beautiful tutorial. Those that took the retreat, those mailed out, they got them yesterday in the mail. And oh my goodness, I already screwed up. But that's okay, we're gonna, we're gonna make this happen. I already screwed up. I put, you know what I did? I shouldn't have adhered this. See, I got too excited. Okay, I didn't put too much on there. So look at this, look at how sneaky I'm gonna be. Okay, we're doing a little stamp surgery. There we go. So I should not have adhered that. I got a little excited. I got a little excited about that. Okay, so I'm putting my ribbon behind there. Oh boy, calm down, right? You know, last week when I was with you all live, I was having quite, quite the week last week, if you remember right. Now I'm looking for my ribbon scissors. My goodness, this is what I get for trying to make cards. I was sitting in a different spot when I made them. Just gotta look around for it. Okay, cause you know, I can't use a different scissors. I love my ribbon scissors. Okay, so anyways, last week I was all in a kerfuffle because I was just having a week. You know, things were breaking and carpool lane and all of that. Well, guess what? This week, do you know what's all better about that? My husband took the kids to school this week. <laughs> so it has been smooth sailing all around for me this week. I haven't had any of the drama of the carpool lane. I went to the appliance store on Monday and bought a new washing machine. So, I mean, it's just all looking up here at the Nelson household. Okay, let's put that down. Put a glue dot down. That's where it gives me a little, it's, it's just easier to tie a boat. You see that? So it's not going to be moving all over the place. Um, it's just so much easier if you put a glue dot down where you want your bow to go. And this, what I love about this ribbon is it's very forgiving. Very, very forgiving. So, um, you know, if you're just getting into tying your bows, go with this stuff. It is the, um, let's see, what is it called? Just the Whisper White. Whisper White Ribbon. That's what it's called. It's in the annual catalog. And we'll trim off these little layers. I don't know if I should take my chances on getting this other one apart. This one came apart so nicely for me to sneak that ribbon behind there. I'm going to try it. It's worth a try, right? Okay, let's see what we can do. 
Okay, my ribbon is kind of a mess here. It's the, like the little bit left on the roll is all that I have left. I do need to put this on first. As you see, I'm the seal, you don't need a lot of adhesive, so I'm just kind of slapping a little bit on there. Now let's see if we can get this this one apart. Oh yes, we can. See, I didn't I didn't push it down real hard. Okay, now I will. Look at that. Somehow things are just working out for me this week. Now, if this was last week, I don't know that I would have even tried that. Last week was something in itself. But we had the retreat. We had a wonderful time. Um, so if you're ever thinking about uh, attending with us at an in-person retreat, it is a superb time. Lots and lots of laughs. Good food, good cards, good crafting. Everyone, you know, we made the regular classes, but then all kinds of fun projects people were working on. Okay, and I'm going to just flip that around. And we've got another beautiful setup. Okay, so now we'll add our next layers. And this one, I want to use the stockings. Now, of course, this could be a great option. Maybe we should do one of each. Okay, well, as hard as it is to let those puppies and kitties go, I think I'm going to. I'm going to make one with that and then... And we'll get all different kinds of looks. We'll have three different looks from this designer series paper if I use the flip sides there. And we'll need to get some dimensionals. I'm gonna put this layer of designer series up on dimensionals. Since I got that ribbon behind there, you know, it's it probably lay flat. You could lay it flat, but I like a little, little dimensional action here. And I do have the larger ones handy. That doesn't happen too often. Usually I just have the small ones around. Okay, so that goes there. We want to put them on this side. And then we're going to do a little, little bit of heat embossing. I've got some layering circle cutouts over to the side here. And I'm going to have two more Christmas cards ready to go by the end of this video. So if you decide to create this layout with any kind of designer series paper, I'd love to see it. Feel free to share it in the comments. Of course, I appreciate all of your comments and likes, shares. Um, so please give me a like, a love, a laugh, whatever you decide, whatever you're feeling at the moment, because um, it truly, truly means a lot to me, all of your, all of your support. Okay, so let's flip this down. Look at that. Oh, it's so cute. Okay, so now we've got next our circle. So we could, I don't know, let's see. I've got the scalloped, and then I did some regular ones where I cut it right out of the designer series paper. So I think we'll just mix it up a little bit. We'll do one on each side. This just happens to be what I cut out. And let's do one with the light bulbs. Sure, why not? Christmas has a little light bulb. <laughs> that didn't make any sense. Oh boy. Okay, and let's put this one down. And these are gonna go right onto the designer, right on top of the designer series. No pop dots needed on here, because we're gonna put pop dots up on our, um, when we put our sentiment on. So you can see how quickly this goes together. You can put any kind of label die. Gosh, I don't have that together quite right. And let's put this one down. And then let's do some very simple heat embossing. You know what I'm gonna do so I don't forget? This is something I forget all the time. And then I go to send the card. And I have to find a piece of paper, a white insert, to put on the inside so I have something to write on. So I'm gonna do that right away. So now these are ready for sending as soon as I get that heat embossed piece on. And you know what I didn't even do? I can see it like ever so slightly, I can see the comments on my phone, but I never even logged in on my computer to see if I was live in the right spot. So I sure hope so. I mean, it's kind of too late now, too late to turn back. So we'll just do, do what we can do. All right, and so I've got some cherry cobbler scraps. I'm gonna end up cutting these down. So it's not so important the size of your cherry cobbler um, pieces. Uh, it's just gonna fit this Christmas greetings stamp. Okay, and so this is like a little bit of, it's not magical, but kind of what I've been doing lately um, as far as cutting my stamp sentiments apart to make them fit into the space that I'm using, you know? So you might look at this this and go, well, that's too long for this card. Well, it certainly is, but what we need to do is cut it apart and we can do that. Now you can even, now if you're real brave, 
You can even cut your stamp apart. We call that stamp surgery. Um, we had a little of that action going on this weekend. Somebody had cut their stamp apart and that's just fine. They are meant to be using and if it makes means that you can use it um, better or for your liking, just go for it, why not? And I'm just gonna cut it though, like I'm gonna cut it after it's stamped. But you can cut your stamp apart if you want. Be brave if you want to. All right, and let's go ahead, go straight up, straight down. Notice I'm stamping with a photopolymer stamp, so that is why I have this foam mat here. And it gives it a little bit of cushion to get a better stamped image. You can see that slightly. When you're doing heat embossing, you do use VersaMark. Um, to do the initial stamp, and then you sprinkle this powder over the top of it. Um, all right, and I happen to have the white. If you choose to do the class option, it, this is an optional add-on, so if you have not yet gotten into embossing, it's a great opportunity to try it. And in our embossing powders, there's two different packages. One is the basics, that's what I'm using here. It includes white, clear, and um, silver. All right, I always just keep a little paintbrush nearby. I got one little spot I wanted to brush off of there. And I'm gonna do the same right here. So as you see, I like to just hold it. I have a, happen to just have a coffee filter. You can you know, pour it into whatever you'd like. And then I'll tap it out of the way, get the excess off of there. And then I can set that aside. I will worry about pouring my leftover embossing powder back into the container later and I can move that out of the way. And so now all we have to do is heat it up and that's what's gonna make it set. So you do need to have a heat tool to make this work. And so I'm just going to go right along here. It does take a minute to warm up, but then once it starts to warm up, it is like the most, I'm gonna hold this up as close as I can so that you can get a really good look at that. Now watch your fingers, I'm maybe a little bit too close there. Okay. There, see, it's like magical. It is so magical when the embossing powder heats up. I just love it. Okay, so we have our first one, and now let's go ahead and do the second one. So pretty. This would be great for snowflakes as well, if you're thinking of Oh goodness, let's not even talk about that yet. We don't want to talk about snow yet. Although, you know what? My husband, all right, I'll talk about snow. I mean, it's inevitable, it's gonna come. I'm from Minnesota, so if you're, which you can probably tell from my accent, so if you happen to be popping in for the first time, um, that's where I'm from. I do need to have a sip of my coffee here. Talking snow makes me cold, I need some coffee to warm up. It is not snowing here. It has been absolutely gorgeous here. Hold on. But my husband and daughter, so, it, it, you know, this is kind of like ongoing. So my husband and daughter, um, well, my son went with two. In August, they went out camping in Wyoming to kind of scout out some hunting spots. Now, they are leaving, my husband and daughter, my son is too young to go on this trip to hunt. So he's, him and I will be home alone. It'll be fun. Um, but they are leaving tomorrow to go hunting. And guess what? Where they're hunting in Wyoming, they just got like a foot of snow. So I guess that's good for hunting, whatever they're hunting. I think they're hunting mule deer. But yeah, so it's not going to help the cause any because I'm sure it's beautiful out there right now with the snow. And they're trying to get me to move there. So um, I'm sure it's great there. I'm sure I would love it. But I also like it, happen to like where I live now. So I'm not sold on the moving to Wyoming. But they're pressing pretty hard trying to talk me into it. I just think it's a great place that we should vacation as a family. So what do you all think? I'm thinking that it's just, I should stay right where I'm at. Could you imagine having to move the craft room? I mean, that would be a task in itself. Do you see that? I'm just cutting these right apart. I think I need to heat this one little part just a smidge more. It didn't quite all set up. And you can, you probably can't see on the video, but I can see close up that it needed just a little bit more. It was like so close, but not quite. All right, and I'm just gonna continue to cut that apart. We'll put that up on dimensionals. We will add a few of the matte decorative dots, 
and then we're gonna be done for the day and I'm gonna have two additional Christmas cards made. And I hope that you're crafting along with me, whether you're creating this as we go or something else. I mean, it's a great day to get crafty and stamp something in your stamp room, your living room, dining room, wherever you happen to be stamping. Maybe you're stamping with a friend. That's even more fun. Okay, now I'm trying to find some minis. I like having all kinds of dimensionals. So now I could cut those in half, but as long as I have mini here, I'm gonna go with that. So we're gonna put dimensionals on the backs of all of these. And now I'll use the mini ones. I'm gonna put one on each side. And then we'll just kind of zigzag these onto the layering circles. So that's what I use here, layer, layering circle dies. There's scallops and regular circles, but I think I mentioned that any label would do. I love cutting circles out of designer series paper. I love using them differently than just for backgrounds. So now we need to have the Christmas first. And that's gonna, oh my goodness, this is gonna look so cute having all these different patterns. And so then the trick is picking which one is your favorite. I mean, it doesn't matter. They can all be our favorite, but I usually like to say, okay, now which one do I like best after I made it all? A lot of times it's not the first one. However, I mean, how can you not just smile at that puppy there? I think he almost needs a name. It kind of looks like our Molly that we, our lab that um, we used to have. She passed away about a year ago. So it looks just like her. And that's actually what the kids said when they saw the card too. And let's go ahead and just kind of tilt it a little bit. I said zigzag, tilt, whatever, they're all the same. Okay, so look at that, that finishes our card. So again, this is part of the Sweet Stockings Christmas class that I am offering. Sign up goes through November 5th and the class kits will ship no later than November 15th. Of course, there's the pickup option as well. So I don't know. I think I, I think I would definitely go between these two. These two are nice, but or this is nice, but I think I prefer having the puppies or kitties on there as well. So probably between these two. I don't know if I could pick between these two, but this is nice too. So anyways, let me know which one you think is the cutest, the one with more of the stocking look or just the puppy with the lights wrapped around it. All right, everybody. So that is gonna conclude our Facebook Live for this week. Uh, I will be back next week. It will be October 13th at 11 a.m. Central. Until then, I hope you all have a wonderful week and get some Stampin' Projects done yourself. Take care, everybody.